So uh, we're going to talk today about coping with quarantine. Uh, and as we prepare to talk about this, remember that with, with Awaken Ministries, that the focus of everything we do is to awaken to life, to live. And we want to stay focused on our goal with that, and we're doing that spiritually. Uh, so let's come back to our topic, coping with quarantine. Quarantine is what's been happening a lot with the coronavirus, and uh, people have concerns about that. So when you Google the word quarantine, it states that uh, quarantine is a state or period of isolation. Uh, usually this is of people or animals who uh, are suspected of having been exposed to infectious or contagious disease. And it's an imposed isolation, uh, sometimes voluntarily, but it can also be legally. Uh, it can be enforced and required legally. And uh, Google notes that many animals die in quarantine. I was not aware of that, but that is per Google today. In, in, uh, if you want to verify that, just Google the word quarantine. Um, there are many health issues about uh, the coronavirus and other types of viruses or bacteria that cause epidemics. And uh, we're not a health uh, program. We are a spiritual program. So um, what we have done is we have a playlist uh, called Remedies for Cold Slash Flu. And on that playlist, uh, as we've been updating on the coronavirus, um, what we have posted there are uh, videos from medical professionals, and some of those videos are also from pseudo-professionals. They do not appear to be fake news, um, but we encourage all of our viewers to become uh, more skilled at uh, looking at, at what is really uh, a valid point of view or information versus fake news. We need to have um, increasing skills with that. And so please consider that as you uh, watch the playlist on remedies for cold and flu. That includes some health remedies and suggestions about what to do health-wise with the coronavirus and other illnesses. So but coming back to quarantine, uh, with quarantine, a medical or and or legal professional uh, has found that it, it that a person or a community needs social isolation. It has to be necessary. Um, and this is not the first time it's happened. People used to quarantine like a hundred years ago all over uh, with different um, epidemics that happen. So it's not a, a new thing. It's just that we haven't had to have it happen uh, to the level that it is now in our quote-unquote modern world. So um, with that, um, let's look at some of the issues involved with social isolation. So social isolation uh, normally uh, includes... Uh, restricting and prohibiting on a large scale uh, gatherings of people, whether it's to uh, go to church or go to school or uh, protest marches, public gatherings, uh, concerts, etc. And uh, this is usually enforced by law, and there is a level of monitoring by, uh, about this. The level of monitoring can be um, Voluntary, but it can also be more restrictive uh, because there, especially the more as this becomes more serious, and we're, most of us aren't used to dealing with that. Okay, now um, I want to bring us to looking at the word decree. Um, um, a decree is a law, and uh, it may include arrest or jail time. It may. It, uh, for some decrees include far more punitive efforts, uh, including, um, you know, uh, prison, uh, death, whatever, 
Uh, but it's interesting that uh, yesterday in Italy, uh, one-fourth of the people on Sunday came under a decree or a law that put them under quarantine. And this is the first that I've really heard publicly, something called a decree. So that's an interesting uh, way to put it. And then today, um, if you look on the news, uh, Italy and several con other countries are under complete quarantine. The whole country is that way. And it's once again called a decree. Also, after the stock market uh, had some problems yesterday, um, on the news, uh, some other news agencies started calling um, the kind of uh, laws around the cor coronavirus in other countries besides Italy a quote-unquote decree. So, we this is a social isolation that um, makes sense when you listen to the information about what's, what the concerns are. Sometimes that social isolation um, looks at the needs of the community more than the individual. And an, an example of this is there was a video posted from China a few weeks ago where uh, people in the community, um, the biggest city that is um, under quarantine, has been under quarantine, uh, were put under um, quarantine and is isolation and lockdown. So with that, whether they were sick or not, they were in their, where they lived, uh, in high-rise buildings, and a number of the people open windows on a day when the sun was out and you could get fresh air coming in, which makes sense, right? Because of the need for oxygen to, and the sun to get rid of any kind of viruses or bacteria that are in the uh, residents, right? Uh, but real quickly, the government told them, no, no, you have to close your windows. You can't have them open. And that was looking at the community needs over the individual. So that's just one example of some of the things that can happen with this. So let's look at some suggestions to cope coming down here. Um, uh, first off, um, bec because we're spiritual, we're going to focus on the spiritual, but I, I want to remind us that if we're under more social isolation and we're following the, the recommendations that the medical professionals have to not needlessly expose other people to risk um, with any kind of illness or virus, um, that's physical isolation. It's really important to do our best to not have emotional isolation in terms, in terms of social isolation. So what can we do if that's if we're under social isolation, if at all possible, as long as we have the internet or phones, uh, uh, it's really important to reach out to friends and family, and it's important for friends and family to reach out to other people, including someone who may be under isolation because they have been exposed to the coronavirus or some other virus. Uh, and that also uh, would fit what uh, Jesus recommended, that people go and visit the sick. You know, and if we can't visit physically, we can visit on the Internet or by phone, right? So, um, anyway, uh, coming to back to suggestions, let's look at spiritual suggestions that uh, we would like to have just said to consider. Spiritual, this is a time where uh, we could focus on studying and praying and hearing God's voice, which is an important thing. Um, you know, there's no church gatherings except for some internet stuff. Uh, certainly we can do some internet stuff, but uh, this is a time where we can really uh, benefit from our, our spiritual sources of support. Uh, we could sing some spiritual songs, but a suggestion that um, we can make is consider reading the book, the ch chapter of John 10, and really pray about what it means. Jesus is... Uh, a source of uh, truth and comfort and hope and strength. So especially read uh, verses 1 through 5, verses 8 through 11, verses 14 through 16, verses 27 through 29, 
and focus on Jesus and hearing his voice. We have a lot of voices out there that are, maybe they say they're spiritual, but they're really wolves. And Jesus talks about that. And we have a source of strength and support spiritually that is safe, and that's Jesus, okay? Um, and our own conscience with Jesus and also uh, reading the promises in the Bible. So another source of strength may be to focus on the truth that's found in prophecy. In, uh, in uh, Matthew 24, Jesus said a lot of things about what's going to happen in the last days. Um, and he combined talking about the destruction of Jerusalem in A.D. 70 with what's going to happen in the last days, which we believe is now. And um, especially what we would suggest is uh, read verses 3 through 8 and verses 9 through 13 in Matthew. It talks about uh, pestilences, uh, illnesses that like the coronavirus. It talks about earthquakes. It talks about this being a time of sorrows. And then it goes on and says that uh, talks about um, some things that people do as a reaction to those things, which is how they persecute each other or betray each other. So it's important to read those things and look focus on the hope. Okay, and then spiritually. Um, let's come back to the word decree. If you Google the word decree, um, surprisingly, Google has a lot of information on that in terms of what it means with laws and everything, and they even have some things that they say about what it, what they believe it means spiritually. But but Google's fo focus is not to be a, a spiritual. They're they're Google. So uh, for spiritual answers to a decree, we would suggest reading the book of Esther, reading also um, in the Gospels what a decree means uh, w with Rome, uh, who was the main country in charge back then, and read it, um, you know, read in the book of Esther what decree is, and then focus on Daniel and Revelation and what is a decree. And understand these things. We have laws that come. Sometimes they seem unfair, and there's usually, it usually it's wiser to just do our best to, um, to trust and go ahead and cooperate with different laws and stuff. But uh, decrees mean many things in the Bible, and it's just a good time to refresh ourselves on what that means. And remember, as we do these things, um, that we're focusing on. Being aware and awakening, and we want to awaken to life and to live. And that's what Jesus was about. In John 10.10, 10, he said he came to give life and life more abundantly. And that's the focus that we have and the promise we have in Jesus.